Hi, this is Looking for Geeks, and we're going to be talking about PAX 2018. Which is our 12th year there now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. But, um, so this is PAX West. I still call it PAX Prime and routinely get corrected because it's not called that anymore. But we've been doing it for so long, it'll always be PAX Prime for us. Yeah, we still have all our badges. It's a lot of badges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although you went to the first one in, well, you went to your first one in Bellevue, didn't you? No, no, our friends did go to that, though. Yeah, okay. I missed all of the Bellevue Convention Center ones. Yeah, but... I missed it by a year, but that's okay. It's been yeah. amazing at the Washington State Convention Center. Yeah, it has been. And every year we've been personally snubbed by a certain celebrity. Not sure he knows who he is, but that's okay. Well, maybe we'll put a picture up of him and shame him. No, it's it's <laughs> funny. Maybe we'll do a video about that sometime. All the times that we have run into or been blocked from what we were doing at PAX by this particular celebrity who doesn't actually know we exist. We'll see if he's there this year. <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of, it's a funny set of stories. <laughs> it's a running gag for us, even if he doesn't know. Yeah, and I swear that a horrible show that's getting canceled must know about my nemesis because they made a certain character on that show his nemesis. Hmm. My parents were the first person to bring that up and I laughed so hard because they were like, it's just like you. And I was just like, <laughs> excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a theoretical physicist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a real job. Oh. Just kidding. It's just string theory that's fake. Yes, that's true. <laughs> well, anyway, so we're going to do a series of videos, and this first one is all about the panels we're excited about this year. Yeah, PAX has got a really good lineup this year, as usual. I mean, they always bring some great, uh, uh, some great guests to cover some interesting topics. But they did a variety of different kinds of things, and they've mixed a lot of the guests up by, like, genre. So there are some horror guests that are actually doing panels that are not horror related, which is interesting. Yeah, the, it'll be interesting to get their perspectives on other things for sure. Yeah. What What are you looking forward to? Well, there's actually two panels about Breath of the Wild. Um, one about you know, where the Zelda series goes from here, which should be interesting. Because, I mean, not like most of us have any idea what's really going to happen, but it's always fun to, you know, try and figure it out using the clues they've given us. Then there's a second panel on Zelda about the psychology of Breath of the Wild, which should be really interesting. That one I actually looked at and was thinking about going to. But who, who's on the panel? Um, good question. Who is on that panel? Let's look at the, look at the app and find out. Uh, Breath of the Wild, Future of the Series, is going to have Elias Thompson, uh, Josh Jepson, Max Nichols, and uh, Chelsea X Lynn. Uh, They're all Twitch handles for the guests, so. which makes sense since it's you know that that's the one on where does the series go, which is going to be entirely just them, their ideas of where yeah. it should go. And the psychology, the, keep that. <laughs> Steven, cut that. <laughs> Shall I count down? No, no, it's it's a. Oh, my favorite right. murder reference. I know. Anyway, did you actually want to keep it? You want to cut it? Well, they never cut it when they tell Stephen to cut it. Oh, fine. Then <laughs> we won't cut it. The other panel, the psychology of the Breath of the Wild, has Dr. Anthony Bean, who is a clinical psych psychologist. Funny word to say. Dr. Rachel Cowart, a research psychologist. Dr. Stephen Daniel, assistant professor, at Appalachian State. Dr. Sarah Hayes, director of human factors, Rico Free. Not familiar with that, but I'm sure it's important. <laughs> Dr. Shane Tilton, assistant professor at Ohio Northern University. So that one actually has a lot of professionals in psychology and, and the human mind. So that should be really fascinating. That, that does sound really cool. Um, I mean, I looked at this one on the schedule and was like, ooh, maybe I'll go to that one. And I love Breath of the Wild. I've never gotten very far in it because I pretty much wander around and capture horses for ever. She's, I, she's an explorer. I'm like, what, 80 hours oh, in? And it's, I'm, it's a lot. I'm not very far. And But she's found so much. 
It's the second time we've played because we we, we had it on the Wii U, and then we had a Switch. So of course we had to make the Switch to the Switch. Yeah, and I'm Switch. like twenty. <laughs> Sorry, got stuck. twenty or thirty hours into playing it on the Switch, which is so much fun. It's still worth it, even if you've played a lot of it. It's still fun to go yeah. back through. I hope that they talk about how grinding is part of the psychology of the game. Yeah, it kind of is. You have to grind for the right gear for the area. And make grind sure for the right it. food. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much how much you're hunting in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I hunt things just to see if I can hunt them and then feel terrible afterwards. <laughs> like that poor little fox, the first time I killed him I was like, you can kill the fox, I'm never doing that again. At least you get food. I don't remember what I got, I, I'm just scarred. So <laughs> scarred for life. Maybe I'll fox. ask them why that's so horrifying for me. <laughs> On a psychological level, why is it so horrifying to kill the fox? when you're hunting randomly in Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Speaking of horrifying. Yes. So my panels have an icon of horror locally. Chris Straub, the first panel has nothing to do with horror unless you include the fact that they're talking about bad mobile applications. Which, those can be pretty horrific. <laughs> that should be interesting. That's true. I love playing games on my phone because I'm on the bus like two hours a day or more. Thanks, Seattle traffic. <laughs> but yeah, I play a lot of games on my phone and some are winners and I'm still playing them to this day and some are really terrible and it's like, ooh, I got past the loading screen and I don't want to play it kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, I've experienced yeah. that as well. Right now, in particular, uh, one of my favorite things are visual novels, specifically Japanese dating games. There are some really terrible ones. And it's not just because they're old. They're badly written. The dialogue's terrible. Some of them, the story is just like, what am I doing here? Why would I want to date an emotionally abusive vampire? <laughs> and I get to hear all about them. It's horribly entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and some games have so many paths and like some of the paths are good and some of the paths are bad. And so you're like, oh, I loved going through this path on the game, but this one's so glitchy and constantly freezes and now my game won't load waiting for the next patch. <laughs> but so that's exciting. And then Oddly enough, halfway across the city, halfway across the city of Seattle, Chris Drop is actually scheduled for another panel directly afterwards that is called, uh, Are You Scared Yet? Is that the one? Uh, let's see. It's on Saturday. On Saturday. It is. Oh, uh, Oh, you don't have it. it. Oh, Maybe it's what? Sunday. Oh, there we go. It's S Sunday. Scared Yet, a discussion of horror in media. And so I love horror. I always have. I used to sneak and watch scary movies as a kid. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> and when I met this wonderful person, he was a Silent Hill fan. And I feel like I've played all of the Silent Hill games multiple times because I used to just watch him play and tell him what to do. <laughs> you play. <laughs> but the visuals and the audio are, is really, I mean, it could make a, a good movie and they did make a couple of decent movies out of it at least. And I know this is gonna sound weird. I find the music very comforting. And I think if it's I, the static. It's gotta be the, the white noise <laughs> if, if I can't fall asleep putting on Silent Hill music, you know. But, and since there's so much ash falling in Seattle, uh, you know. It's like we're there. It's like we're there. <laughs> the smoke, the ash, the fog. But also on that panel is the man who created Robocop, uh, Paul Verhoeven. I hope I said that correctly. I'm not Theater entirely person. sure. He's Dutch? Not he's sure. brilliant. It doesn't matter where he's from. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an amazing director, legendary director, cult movie director. <laughs> totally. And this year, like my honorable mention panel is they're doing a PAX orientation for people who have never been to a large convention. Which is a great idea because it can be a bit of a culture shock going into such a, a, a space like that with you know 75,000 people 
And maybe you know two or three of them. Yeah, step to the right. You know, don't wear open-toed shoes in the main <laughs> hall. Make sure you wear deodorant. These are things uh, that please I... Please wear deodorant. Please wear deodorant. <laughs> um, if your hotel doesn't have enough towels in your bathroom, ask for more and take extra showers. They'll it's help sweaty. You. They want to help you. It's not even It's not even one person's fault. It's the fact that we're all in this giant room and it's kind of humid here all the time. Yeah. And so after a while, the entire hall smells like swamp bass. <laughs> <laughs> but yes so I totally embarrassed myself at this point but anyway that that panel is pretty cool do you have any honorable mentions uh, there was one power word rock and they're gonna be talking about the the link between heavy metal imagery and RPGs wow I didn't even look at that one. yeah it sounds really entertaining uh, let's see we've got Luke Crane who was involved in The Burning Wheel. I believe he's the head writer on that. I Don't quote me on it, though. Uh, Adam Koval, who was one of the writers on Dungeon World, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, and then Drozdal, and I hope I said that right, <laughs> uh, who is, I didn't realize, a, mem a, a member of the band Blind Guardian, as well as working on The Burning Wheel. So it should be a really interesting talk with these luminaries of RPGs and heavy metal music. So I might be aging myself, but did you notice the panel that's gaming over 40? I missed that. It's, it's on the it's on the first day, it's on Friday. Huh. And it, it's talking about aging with the community and introducing people to newer games. And I think that that's pretty cool. No, that is really cool. Because, you know, sometimes older folks tend to get, you know, get stuck in what you're doing. and. We get stuck in our retro games a little much, and then <laughs> next thing you know, three seasons of Overwatch have gone by, and... You haven't ranked at all. <laughs> yeah, and it can get pretty nasty. But, but there's always new stuff worth looking at, but you know, as you get older, you tend to focus on what was fun before, and it's, it's nice to have people pushing you to try new things. It is, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of diversity in the panels this year. I've noticed some things about parenting, which is pretty cool, because when we first started going to PAX, there were, well, okay, there were no parents with children. There were children, <laughs> but they were all, like... Teenagers there by themselves, mostly. Yeah, yeah, they and weren't people there with their kids. And now that's been going for so long, all of us oldies that have been there for years have kids, and they're taking them with them now, so yeah, it, it's definitely become a thing. Um, oh, another thing, don't bring your double-decker stroller into the main hall. One, they won't let you, and two, if you do somehow get it in there, you're, it's just a disservice to it, everybody be because it, there's, there's not enough room, at least in the mornings, Take it in the afternoon if you're going to. At least in the mornings because of the crush of people. And it's literally, they call it the running of the geeks. <laughs> I've worked Accurate. a lot of conventions and actually filmed it. It's pretty impressive. You should go on YouTube and just tape it just to get a feel of what it's like. Yeah, they had a great one from Gen Con this year, too. Oh, wow. The Gen Con one was, is, that was crazy. is always impressive. Uh, Sakura Con. They actually get the crowd really like worked up, and then they <laughs> shout at them not to run, which is the mo I find very hilarious. Yeah, nerds that have been sitting in line drinking soda and energy drinks, getting them all excited, and then expecting them not to run. <laughs> but at, at Sakurafan, they actually they don't. They they'll, <laughs> they'll power walk, which is also really funny to watch. But... Especially if they're in cosplay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But so we're really looking forward to it and our, oh, I almost forgot. If you want to come and meet me and Kane, we're going to be at a fundraiser on Friday night. It happens every year during PAX and it also happens during Emerald City Comic Con. It was really close to being sold out. Last I saw there were only like 10 tickets left. Yeah, it, it's called uh, For the Win, Gaming on Top of the World. At the top of the Columbia Tower. Yes, and so they have games, and they're going to have special guests. One of them is Patrick Rothfuss. And, <laughs> yeah, 
And so if you come, I can teach you how to play Tanto Kore and my friend Nate can teach you how to play Heart of Crown or you can just play it in a social environment. It will be a lot of fun. They have themed drinks. They've had uh, Doctor Who ones and Pan Galactic Gargle Blasters and lots of um, Romulan ales and various different things. This will be my first year going, so I'm really interested to see how it goes. I'm just hanging out. I'm not actually working. Yeah, he he's coming as my... I, I After I get done running demos, I tend to get a little drunk. <laughs> I'll be the designated taxi caller. <laughs> yeah. I just... I actually just really want him there with me because I usually wind up out there. I'm reading the Green River Killer book right now, and... Paranoia. <laughs> Being in a big city, though, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it's a lot of fun, and you should come out. It supports Seattle Children's Hospital, which is one of the most important charities that you could ever in your life donate to. Those kids deserve your patronage. Thank you again. This is Looking for Geeks. See you at PAX.